respiratory tests, eminent scientists, faculty members, and teachers, students. Assalamu alaikum. Basically, I don't have words to thank Anhat or Nashut or NGO. They gave us an opportunity. This is for the first time in the history of Sudan College. Eminent scientists from the media that worked a lot also are delivering lectures in this college to the students of this college. For that, I am highly thankful to them. Presently, we are this time with eminent scientists. Among them, we have Professor Amitabh Joshi, Professor Devanan Nairo Center for Advanced Psychiatric Research Bangalore, Dr. TNC Vidya, Associate Professor, Jawaharlal Nairo Center for Advanced Scientific Research Bangalore, Ms. Shabnam Hashmi, who is uh, what we say dynamic daily working for the benefit of the pure communities. And then this time she is associated with Anand Community Center Kopara. Mr. Arun Diwari is also leading NGO worker and is associated with Anand Community Center Kopara. Dear students, it's what we can say great pleasure for we all that we are having the eminent scientists who will deliver this program in this, this body so that our students can get the uh, benefit so far as the eminent scientists are concerned because it's uh, very difficult to listen to these two eminent personalities and if you will see YouTube's and other things uh, so far as the Google search may you will come to know how valuable they are. Thank you. Organizing this, the principal, the vice principal, uh, and scholars, it's a great pleasure to be here at this wonderful place. And I thank uh, Shabunji and uh, Anhad for uh, making this happen also. Salam uh, alaikum to all of you. And uh, today I will be talking about understanding animal social organization. Uh, how many of you are biology students? Are all of you biology students? No, ma'am. No. Okay. How many of you are biology students? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Okay. okay. The rest are mathematics, physics? Normal and arts. Arts also? Okay, great. Okay. So, we will keep this somewhat simple. You can ask me questions if you don't understand. So, when we talk about understanding animal societies, what do we want to uh, understand? Right? One could look at social organization, social structure, I tell you what that is. So we would like to look at whether animals are solitary or social. If they are social, we can look at the social organization, which means what is the size of groups they live in, uh, what is the group composition. So are males and females living together? Are there groups in which young ones are associating with older individuals? Uh, is there parental care? What is the group size and composition? We can also look at social structure, which is what kinds of social relationships are present within these groups. So are there friendly interactions? Are there affiliated interactions between individuals? Are there conflicts between individuals? Are there hostile interactions, what we call agonistic interactions? Uh, are there those kinds of relationships? Are there those kinds of relationships within groups? Are there those kinds of relationships between groups? So all of this will constitute a social structure. And we would like to see why there are these different kinds of societies. When we look at uh, animal societies, we would also like to understand what kinds of different mating systems are there and what kinds of offspring care systems are there. But today, we won't have the time to go into those two, so we will look at the first part. Now, what are the advantages of being social? Anybody? One is already written here. Sorry? Defense against predation, that is written here. If you are in a group, 
you can defend yourself against predators. Any other advantages? Sorry? Anything? What else? Beneficial relationship also. Beneficial relationships? <laughs> what kinds? What kinds of help do you get by being in a group versus being alone? Anything? Yeah, loudly. It's okay if it's wrong. Yes? Yeah? Loudly, loudly. There can be division of labor. There could be a better ability to find food. Right? So if you look at honeybees, bees will go out, they go to the flowers, they bring food back. They dance to other bees to show the location of where this food is. So other bees can go out and find food. Right? Or you could have birds feeding together in, say, a pond. One bird walks around, the fish moves, and then another bird is able to get it. If you look at our textbooks and the curriculum, Evolutionary biology is largely not there or if it is there, it is not given much importance and more importance is given to things like molecular biology because people think somehow and this is a wrong thought that molecular biology will solve all our problems. Actually that is not true. Evolutionary biology is not just of interest to biology as a subject but also very important to all kinds of biomedical, even social issues that we have to deal with as societies. And in that sense, having some appreciation for why understanding evolution is so important, not just for biologists, not just for scientists, but for all of us as citizens, as human beings. So that is the idea behind this talk and I just give you some thoughts which hopefully are little different in the spirit of Mirza Ghalib who said kya farz hai ke sab ko mile ek sa jawab aao na hum bhi sair karen kohe tur to aiyya humare saath kohe tur ki ek sair karte hai aur shayet evolution ke baare mein jo aapki textbook mein jo knowledge hai usse hat ke kuch knowledge kuch insight mil jai koi dousra jawab mil jai so one of the first things we have to understand about evolutionary biology. It is not like it is a branch of biology, like biochemistry is a branch of biology or uh, zoology is a branch of biology. Evolutionary biology has two roles or two aspects to it. It is both a kirdar, it is a discipline of biology, it is a defined subject, it has a particular kirdar. It has its own approaches, its methodologies, its uh, you know uh, techniques, and so on. But.